Hello, fifth grade. Now, in our second unit on Zionism, we're going to learn about a very important figure named Theodor Herzl. Theodor Herzl is seen as the forefather or founder of modern Zionism. It's his actions and his ideas that led to the creation of the modern state of Israel. Now, it is a remarkable thing that Theodor Herzl, a man who was not religious, wasn't a proud Jew, eventually contributes so much to the Jewish people. It was his life experiences that led him to believe the only way that Jews can be safe is they need a country and that Europe will not ever be safe for the Jews. Okay, so hopefully I have it focused now. So again, the first thing that we are, are going to be speaking about is Theodore Herzl, the forefather of modern Zionism. Now, Theodore Herzl was born in Budapest, which was in the kingdom of Hungary. He was an assimilated Jew. Assimilated means a person who has absorbed and taken on the ideas and practices of the culture in which they live. Now, you guys should all know about assimilation because you are learning about this in Rabbi Rada's Jewish history class. So examples of how he was assimilated was he did not know Hebrew or Yiddish and he did not practice Judaism. So again, he was born in the kingdom of Hungary, in the city of Budapest. So I'll show you where that is. The kingdom of Hungary is right over here. All right, so now we'll move on. And I want to talk about what eventually led up to him becoming a Zionist. So one of the main things that eventually made him become Zionist is the hatred of Jews that existed in Europe. Now there existed two kinds of hatred of Jews in Europe. One was called anti-Judaism and one was called anti-Semitism. So first I want to talk about anti-Judaism. All right. So anti-Judaism is hatred of Jews based on their religion. According to this belief, Jews are evil because their religion teaches them to believe in and do evil things. Typo. This is the form of hatred of Jews that existed until the late 1800s. If a Jew converted and stopped being Jewish, it was believed that they would no longer be evil, so they would not be hated. So next, I want to show you an example of anti-Judaism, lies and hateful things said about Jews based on their religion. So one example of anti-Judaism was called the blood libel. Now, libel means a lie. According to the blood libel, the Jewish religion teaches Jews to use the blood of a Christian boy to make matzah, and this is a necessary part of the mitzvah of eating matzah on Pesach. So again, there existed this lie in Europe that in order to make matzah, Jews would take hostage and kill a young Christian boy and use the blood to make matzah. And this led to sometimes when a Christian boy would disappear, the Jews would accuse, sorry, the non-Jews would accuse the Jews of having captured the Christian boy and killing them. And this led to riots against Jews and Jews being killed, being accused of killing the Christian boy to make matzah. Of course, that is a lie. So next, I want to talk about the other form of hatred of Jews, which was called anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is hatred of Jews based on their race, and Jews are a part of a race called Semites. Race means to group people based on appearance. So an example of a race is black people, white people, Asians. 
Again, race means to group people based on appearance. Now, it was a lie to call Jews a race because there are both black Jews, there are Asian Jews, and there are white Jews, and there are Jews who look Arabic. Judaism is, in fact, a religion and not a race. Now, according to anti-Semitism, Jews can't stop themselves from being evil because their race and inherited genes make it so they cannot prevent themselves from being evil. Therefore, even if a Jew converted, they'd still be evil. A person cannot change their genes. This became the most common form of hatred of Jews in Europe after the late 1800s. So again, there was one form of hatred of Jews, which is called anti-Judaism. The other part the other kind is called anti-Semitism, and that means hatred of Jews based on their race. All right, so now here are some examples of anti-Semitism. So one example is the Jewish race has an, has an inherited urge to want to control the world. Or another example of anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews based on their race. All Jews have large noses and are more like animals than humans. Another lie, another anti-Semitic example is Jews will do anything for money, lie, steal, cheat, and start wars. It is a part of their DNA. So here are some examples of anti-Semitic art, uh, anti-Semitic cartoons. I'll show you the first one. So here it shows there's this French Jew and he has his hands all over the world. And the idea is, is that it is saying that Jews want to take over the world. And then here you'll see an image where it shows that a, um, a Jew who looks more like a rat than a human being. And the idea is, is that Jews are like rats and that they steal and they just take stuff. Now, also, you'll notice in all of this art, the Jews look more like animals than human beings. So for example, here, the Jew looks more like a monkey. And notice how it has pointy ears. And then you also see in this example here, the Jew is again trying to take over the world. And notice how he has pointy ears and these web-like hands. And the idea is you often see in this anti-Semitic artwork that Jews have web-like hands and pointy ears and pointy large noses. And the idea of the webbed hands, the pointy nose, and the pointy ears was to associate Jews with the devil, to say that the Jews are working for the devil and Satan. Okay. Now I will go on to the next slide. Next, I will talk about what was called in Europe, the Jewish problem. In the late 1800s, anti-Semitism became increasingly common in Europe. The Jewish problem was the term used in Europe for the problem that Jews were increasingly hated and not accepted in European countries. This occurred even as the Jews in European countries and things like the French War were supposed to lead to acceptance and equality of all its citizens. So again, the so-called Jewish problem was that Jews were not accepted and they were still hated, even though the laws were supposed to promise equality to everyone. So now I will go back to talking about Herzl. Theodore Herzl's first solution to the Jewish problem. Theodore Herzl in order, said that in order to stop hatred of Jews, number one, Jews should assimilate, act, speak, and eat like the people of the nations in which they live. Number two, he says, Jews in Europe should convert to Christianity. By doing these two things, 
the Jewish problem will be solved and Jews will be accepted and hatred of Jews will end. But eventually Herzl begins to doubt his assimilation solution. He arrived in Paris as a journalist, which was supposed to be the ideal model city of the new Europe of freedom and equality. As a journalist, he was shocked to see how common anti-Semitism was among the French people and the French press. And so he begins to doubt that assimilation can solve anti-Semitism because most of France's Jews were assimilated and they still suffered greatly from anti-Semitism. So again, this is this anti-Semitic this anti -Semitic cartoon that I showed you earlier. It shows the Jews' hands covered in blood and he's trying to take over the, the world. Now here's another anti-Semitic French newspaper. So here it shows the Jew and he is working for the angel of death and he's taking other people's money. Okay, now I will go on to the next slide. Okay. Herzl's solution for Jews did not work. Again, that Herzl's first solution was, was that Jews should assimilate. But this solution didn't work. And now here are the reasons why assimilation did not work. Jews were actually hated because of their race and not their religion. Therefore, even if they converted to Christianity, they were still seen as part of the Jewish race and evil. It became a popular belief that Jews could not assimilate and therefore they needed to be expelled so they can live in their own land. Now, another thing that really had a large impact upon Theodore Herzl and eventually made him give up on assimilation and become a Zionist is what is called the Dreyfus Affair. The Dreyfus Affair was when a French Jewish officer named Alfred Dreyfus was falsely accused of being a spy. This accusation led to an increase in anti-Semitism in Europe and an outpouring of hatred in the media and, the sh uh, and in the street with riots and mobs chanting death to the Jews. So again, Alfred Dreyfus was accused of being a spy. He was arrested and he lost all rank in the army. And this led to huge amounts of anti-Semitism. And it shocked Herzl that this French Jew who was serving his country loyally, he was still suffering from anti-Semitism. So here, Alfred Dreyfus is drawn more like a monster. And here it, here it says, Ja accused. The Jews are accused. And it shows the Jews stabbing the French army. Okay. How the Dreyfus affair led to Herzl arguing for Zionism. Alfred Dreyfus was an assimilated Jew who risked his life to serve his nation loyally as a French officer, yet he still suffered from anti-Semitism, and people assumed that he was the spy just because of his race, just because he was a Jew. Therefore, after this affair, Herzl believed that Jews would never be accepted and treated justly in Europe, so they needed their own country. The only answer to the Jewish problem is Zionism, meaning Jews needed to leave Europe and create their own nation. Because even someone like Alfred Dreyfus, who dressed the part, who, who, who dressed like a proper French gentleman and who served in the army wasn't accepted. So therefore, the only answer to anti-Semitism, the only thing that will save the lives of Jews is Jews to make their own state 
and to move to the state of Israel. So Herzl started saying that Zionism is a cure for anti-Semitism. Herzl said Jews are hated and anti-Semitism exists because they are other meaning that they are different from every other nation and people that has their own state. Once Jews create their own state, Israel, they won't be other. They won't be seen as, as different. They will be the same and equal to other nations who have their own state. In this way, anti-Semitism will be cured and people will eventually not hate Jews because they see that Jews are just as capable as everyone else in having their own country with its own culture and religion. All right, so. Okay, so now what I want all of you to be doing is you should open up the handout called Handout 1 Herzl, which is on Schoology, and the PDF called Herzl 1, where I have also posted the notes, and you are going to work with a partner, and you will use a Google document where you will, for example, call it Herzl Olivia, Herzl Avi. And if you can't answer anything, you can look at the PDF, and you can also re-watch the video, which I have posted a link to. All right? Good luck.